Hello. Today we will be conducting two independent sample t-tests using JASP statistical software. The first t-test will be in the frequentist or classical paradigm, and the second t-test will be in the Bayesian paradigm. So let's get started. Let's suppose that we have some sample data. On the left side, we have ratings for employee satisfaction on a one to seven scale, representing very unsatisfied to seven, representing very satisfied. In the second column, we have two departments, department A and department B. Our research question is, does employee satisfaction in department A differ from employee satisfaction in department B? Now to address this research question, we are gonna conduct an independent samples t-test. Starting with the classical t-test, we'll select independent samples t-test under the classical menu. Here we can see that there are some boxes that are already checked and we're gonna go ahead and leave them as so. Our alternative hypothesis is that group one does not equal group two, or in other words, employee satisfaction in department A does not equal employee satisfaction in department B. And since we don't have any assumptions about the directionality of the effect, this first option is most appropriate. Next, we're gonna go ahead and drag and drop rating to the dependent variables box. Rating is a dependent variable because we're interested in observing how employee satisfaction ratings change as a function of the department that the employee is in. And we're gonna go ahead and drag and drop that to the grouping variables box. Now, before looking at the test statistic, we're gonna look at our descriptive data. Here we can see that department A has higher average employee satisfaction relative to department B. And now when looking at our test statistic, it also supports this. If we assume an alpha level of 0.05, our p-value of 0 0.016 is less than that. So we can reject our null hypothesis and conclude that there is a difference in employee satisfaction between employees in department A and employees in department B. Next, if we wanna examine the size of this effect, we can select effect size. And then we're gonna go ahead and leave it on Cohen's D. We observe a Cohen's D of 0.94, which is greater than 0.8 or the typical convention for a large effect. Additionally, we can also look at the confidence interval for the mean difference. So this is the mean difference in employee satisfaction from department A and department B. And since this is positive, we can see that department A has higher employee satisfaction than department B. The 95% confidence interval for the mean difference shows us with 95% confidence, if we were replicated the same study over and over and over again, using the same sample, the same measures, et cetera, the 95% confidence interval has a 95% chance of containing the parameter of interest. There is no 95% confidence interval for the effect size in JASP. So now, if we wanted to report this information, we could say that employee satisfaction scores in department A were higher than in department B. In other words, the probability of observing data that is as extreme or more extreme than the observed data is unlikely if we repeatedly sampled. The corresponding standardized mean difference of D equals 0 0.94 is above Cohen's rule of thumb for a large effect. Next, we will do the Bayesian independent samples t-test. We'll select independent sample t-test under the Bayesian menu. As before, we're going to leave the default options as selected. Our alternative hypothesis remains the same. Our base factor, this stands for base factor um, base 10 or 1, 0. 1 indicates the, our alternative hypothesis, and 0 indicates our null hypothesis. And our prior, we will leave the default prior, which is a very wide Kochi prior. And this prior makes it such that the alternative and null hypothesis are equally likely in explaining the data. As before, we will drag and drop rating to the dependent variables box and department to the grouping variables box. Here we can see a base factor of 3.619, or in other words, the alternative hypothesis that employee satisfaction in department A differs from employee satisfaction in department B is approximately three and a half times 
better at explaining the data than the null hypothesis of no difference in employee satisfaction. Our error percentage is extremely low, and this is good because it indicates that the underlying algorithm is stable. So next, if we, we can select the base factor robustness check to see how robust our base factor is. Or in other words, if we vary the prior, does our base factor change? And here we can see that if we vary the prior by a lot, we started with a Kochi prior of 0 0.707. So now we're increasing it almost double and our base factor remains relatively constant. And this is good. It shows that our base factor is robust. So what exactly does the base factor of about three and a half even mean? As a rule of thumb, base factors of one to three represent anecdotal evidence. Base factors of three to 10 represent moderate evidence. 10 to 30 represents strong evidence, so on and so forth. Again, this is evidence in favor of our alternative hypothesis. So now if we wanted to report this, we could say, we observed a base factor of 3.619, indicating that the base factor is 3.62 times in favor of the alternative hypothesis relative to the null hypothesis. In other words, the alternative hypothesis that department A and department B differ in employee satisfaction is moderately better at explaining the data than the null hypothesis of no difference between departments. Substantively, department A has higher levels of employee satisfaction than department B. A base factor robustness check, as shown in a figure below, indicates that the base factor is stable and moderate when varying the width of the specified prior. I hope that this helped. Thank you so much for listening.